What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ben, and I am joined by my tag team partner, Joshua, and we are back for this week's edition of the Backstage Slam Wrestling Podcast, episode number 176. But, yes, Josh and I are, for the first time in video, but because I'm in the middle of uh, ripping out some floor panels underneath the house which are basically right underneath (laughs) right inside my closet i had to pull everything out of my closet and all my stuff is strewn on my bed and i'm sleeping in the living room tonight so that we can continue to fix the floor panels so i can't show you josh and i are looking at each other but yeah there you are i (laughs) <laughs> we will not be showing the video of my messy room in the background. Uh, so, no, we're on video, but no video, uh, no webcam this week. Next week, we'll probably deb- re-debut with a webcam. But we have the uh, the old wrestling podcast overlay on. So, we're live on Spreaker on Josh's end. We're live on Periscope slash Twitter on my end. Cool, 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 cool. And... Uh, so, a lot of you guys know from last week's episode with Josh by himself, my computer blew up during a thunderstorm, and not only did it take out my motherboard and my power supply, but apparently it took out my Behringer, my small Behringer box that I got only two months ago for 60 bucks on Amazon. Brand spanking new. So my, now my XLR mic is gone. I had to go into my brother's closet and pull out the old mic that I'm using, which is the Blue Yeti. This rusted, falling apart piece of crap. And, uh, yeah, so I apologize for the downgraded sound quality. But got the computer back up and running. I'm in the middle of fixing some sound drivers and all that stuff. But that's the life of a, of a techie. And a podcast <laughs> when you're hosting your own podcast. It just sucks with all the headaches that come with it. All right, so let's talk about wrestling. Josh. Yo. I have no idea what to talk about this week. Uh, neither do I. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> this has been BSP 176. Uh, I now. It hasn't been for my lack of watching, which, as you know, sometimes life happens and it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on. But I tell you, I watched Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, Impact, and Ring of Honor. I watched all of it. I watched everything except for I, I watched everything except for Ring of Honor. Well, now that Marty Skrull's holding the book, um, I figured I'd start making it more appointment viewing. You want to talk? Do you want to talk about Marty? I wanted to talk about that last week, but sure, natural disaster sure. intervened. We could talk about Marty and how he's now booking for Ring of Honor, and that could be one of the. Well, let's face it; that was one of the major selling points in getting him to sign with. With that company, even though we, we briefly t- mentioned it before uh, about what his prospects are, which was basically anybody and everybody. He could go anywhere, right? write his own uh, check, so to speak. And when we were talking about this, Ring of Honor never really came up as a possibility for us because it's... I don't want to say it's on the way out, but it's certainly not as good as it was even two years ago. Yeah. And we both said that depending on what his goals are in wrestling, uh, well, you know, kind of set his course because if he goes to AEW, that means he just wants to play it safe and kind of hang out with his friends while getting paid. That's that's what it meant to us. If he if he went to WWE or NXT, that means he's, you know, kind of trying to prove something to where he could he could 
make a name for himself on the biggest stage, which will also, I mean, that's a valid thing to do. Um, Impact, even God brought up as a possibility, because in our opinions, we said it would be him uh, wondering if he could pick up that promotion if if he you know he could throw it on his back and get it back into relevance and let's face it impact has its supporters but it's at best now the number three promotion in the country and that's a far cry from what it was at its heyday Okay, do we know the logistics of his... Uh, I, I haven't looked it up yet, because obviously I haven't had a computer <laughs> for for almost 10 days, but um, do we know the logistics of, of, or should I say the details of Marty Skrull's um, uh, contract, what it entails? Like, I know it's seven figures. Was there like a final number? And I know that he it's a minimum 16-week work rate out of the entire year which is probably the biggest reason why he re-signed with ROH uh, is there anything else about his contract details if you give me just a second I can check All right, I'm going to take this time to plug uh, our Twitter you can follow me at YoBroMMO on Twitter we're currently streaming on Twitter and on Periscope and you can follow Joshua at SkitComic uh, you guys can also uh, subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash yo bro MMO for only $1 a month. We're just asking for only $1 a month, but there are five, ten, and $20 tiers as well. We ha- we do have six Patreons. Uh, we have four in the $1 tier, one in the $5 tier, and one in the $20 tier. Uh, so go ahead and uh, if you f- feel like being a regular and you want to contribute in any way possible, Please go ahead and uh, become a Patreon subscriber at patreon.com forward slash yo bro MMO. Uh, currently, we're talking about Marty Skrull. And uh, it seems that uh, he has settled with staying with Ring of Honor. Uh, he's got basically, they threw a whole bunch of money at him. Josh is kind of look trying to look up for information on the details of what that contract for ROH entails. I know that it was seven figures. I know that he only needs to work a minimum of 16 weeks out of the entire year. Uh, so that's four, eight, 12, that's four months out of the entire year that he really needs to show up on, which is um, probably the biggest reason why he resigned. Uh, I also know that He's been giving uh, booking privileges. I don't think that's a big reason why. But I think the big reason why is the amount of money in ratio to the amount of time that he is allowed to work um, played probably the biggest factor for him staying with Ring of Honor. And not only that, if you followed Marty for however long you've been a fan of his, you know that he 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 really stood out on his own even when he was with the Bullet Club, even though he was with the Elite. You can see on being the Elite that he was an individualist, uh, kind of like Adam Cole, that they can actually stand out on their own and they're really, they're just a compliment to the entire faction. But they are just as powerful as the faction itself. So, um, I always knew that that he might not even be needed or probably wants to prove that he can stand on his own and make a big difference in, in pro wrestling. Uh, so, that's basically my opinion on Marty Skrull. Josh? I have not found anything with numbers. Okay, that's fine. But what do you think is the biggest uh, reason why he decided to stay with ROH? Um, well, it it I think it does have a lot to do with the uh, the booking power. Not that he's uh, comes off to me as any kind of power hungry individual, but 
No, uh, having that kind of creative freedom is probably a big factor in where one decides to go. It kept the Hardys at impact for how long? Almost 10 years, I guess. Yeah. And they could have went back to uh, the Big E at any point. Yeah. And because of that freedom, they stayed with uh, Impact. I'm not not sure how they're feeling about the decision now. But Marty being able to basically control his own destiny in the company, and if what I did happen to read is true, you know, uh, only being obligated for like 40 dates a year, plus the rumors, and they are rumors, take it with as much salt as you need, that he'd still be able to, you know, work certain other promotions and uh, get paid for that well, too. Well, Meltzer and other people have actually confirmed that he he uh, he can uh, show up at NWA... New Japan Pro Wrestling is an option, and uh, other places as well. Nothing on AEW, though. But it's still a possibility. Still a possibility. Considering that AEW still allow 80% of their talent to basically uh, either continue to doing uh, pre-booked dates for those smaller promotions or to even lend themselves to another promotion such as uh, AAA or New Japan. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's it for Marty. Yeah, that's pretty much the. Uh... <laughs> I don't have any more any more to add on that. Um, let's see. Sorry, I, I had a sneezing fit. <clears throat> I know. I saw. I was. I was waiting for you to comment. I was like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> he muted himself. All right. Um, let's talk about Impact Wrestling a little bit. We okay. Tessa Blanchard, mm. new yeah. Impact World. Champion, not women's champion, world champion. Quick thoughts on that. Oh boy. You want me to go I'm, first? I can go first. <laughs> no, I'm not sure how to digest what's been what's been going on. Last week episode number one seventy five. If you haven't listened to it, you know, go back, give it a listen. I Briefly brought up some of the the controversy that's been coming up with Tessa, and I didn't really go into detail with it because I specifically said, you know what, I'd, I'd want to hear Ben's take on this, and uh, I'd wait. So I, I didn't really go really deep into it, but I I, I still haven't processed the fact that. Mm-hmm. Tessa Blanchard is one of the United States world champions in, in a, yeah, I'm going to say a major promotion. And part of me wants to say that it's, you know, it's pretty cool that they trusted her to be able to throw the company on her back and carry it into the future. Another part of me thinks Vince McMahon is kind of pissed off because damn it, that should have been Charlotte. You know? Um, (laughs) How do I feel? You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say um, despite the rumors or the accusations that it's it's pretty nifty how about that we have a, we have a female world champion 
and I'm not going to complain about that one bit, especially who she beat and how it all came about. It made sense. It was believable, and I don't have a problem with it. Now, if, I don't know, she had to face somebody much, much bigger, much, much stronger, and the same thing happened, I might have a bit of an issue with it, but I think the booking really helped out in the situation to make sure that the transfer was not only believable, but also warranted, and it was the right time. That's how I feel. All right. Um, okay, for me, I think it's pretty cool that she is uh, a world champion holding a title that's most mostly <laughs> worn by men. So before I get into that, here's what I have to say about Tessa. I love her. I love her as a wrestler and everything she's accomplished in the ring, but I don't like her as a human being. I like, I love her and respect her for everything she's done as a pro wrestler in her field, but I do not like her as a person. And the way I feel about her is the same way I feel about Sasha Banks, except there is one major difference between her and Sasha Banks. The difference of my feelings, even though that they're the same, is the reason why I like Sasha Sasha Banks and everything that she did, but I don't like her as a human being, was because when I was living in Florida a couple of years ago, when she was still in NXT, me and my ex-girlfriend at that time, we we ran into her three times at, at the local Publix. And she was just being a bitch to us. Very snobby, very rude. Uh, To not just me, but to my girl. More so my girlfriend than to me. So at that moment, I was like, okay. I'm not a fan of you. I don't like you anymore as a person. But I still respect everything that she accomplished from, from 2013 and 2014 onward till now. But for Tessa, I never met Tessa in person. But for years, remember a couple of years ago during the May Young Classic? Yeah. We heard all these rumors about, oh, she showed up in NXT two to three times. Why doesn't she stick around? And all these reports came out like, oh, she has a bad attitude. She, do- she, di- she doesn't like being told what to do. She... uh she has an alpha, alpha male, alpha female complex and gets into it with everybody else. And then, uh, you know, all these rumors recently drummed up when she was out in Japan. She said the N-word and spit in the face of of an African-American uh, uh, talent backstage at a pro wrestling event and all this and all that. So I kind of already knew this all going forward is like, Everybody was saying, whoa, whoa, why she's not in WWE and all that stuff. It's like, well, we already know she doesn't work well with others. It's got to be true if the biggest places ha- don't want to have anything or a little bit iffy on signing her. Uh, and another red flag or another, should I say, Situation that makes sense. You got Impact Wrestling, formerly known as Total Nonstop Action, TNA. For some reason, they are like the little choo-choo train that keeps on going. It breaks down so many times, but it just won't retire. It, it's, it seems like Impact Wrestling, no matter what iteration it was, it has always been filled with problems and issues and everything that comes between... Them being uh, it just a indie promotion that just got a TV deal to something that can shoot all the way up to the top and actually steal some uh, viewers from WWE. But Impact is basically a brand that just keeps falling on bad luck, basically. And to have like Tessa 
and you not be not just the only talent being on that brand that ha- that's very controversial. If you take a look at that roster, there's a lot of people that are controversial <laughs> that are currently in there. Just another example, M- Michael Elgin. Mm-hmm. Making it big name for himself. There's a lot of good people there. There's a lot of good people working there, but there's something there's something there. Like it's like everybody that gets shunned from another promotion for saying something stupid, doing something stupid, or some negative connotation, they end up finding their way at impact and actually making an impact. Mm-hmm. Um so in that sense, it makes sense, but overall, I'm happy for her, but I don't think... Here's my issue. My issue has nothing to do with the controversy surrounding her. My issue is her... Her. Uh, she had the... She had the opportunity to fix something when she made a public statement, both on social media and after her match. Very unapologetic unapologetic and it, and if it was meant to be an apology it sounded very condescending see for me like it sounded to me like Hulk Hogan it sounded like a half hearted apology you know like I don't like Hulk Hogan as a person but I like and respect everything that he's done as a pro wrestler he's still one of my favorite pro wrestlers despite everything but if that something like that ever happened to me, like if I, personally speaking, if I have ever uh, said something racist, or pre- or done something, or you know, or acted like extreme prejudicism, what I would do is I would personally reach out to that person, uh, either in person or on social media, start a dialogue, and actually try to work things out. With that individual. And also put it out there. Be- why? Because optically it, w- it it looks better. Because even if that individual. Doesn't forgive you in the end. At least. You stand a 50% chance. At, of getting that person's respect back. And or. 50%. Having that person legitimately forgive you. You know what I mean? And it and it doesn't, and that goes a long way. Like, especially in social media, that feeds into everything, whether it's entertainment, sports, whatever. It's it's what drives people in this whole cancel culture thing. It's all optical. People see things, people read things, and that's overtaking from people hearing things. You know what I mean? So, I think if uh, she reached out to Everybody that she supposedly wronged in person or whatever, uh, and the people that actually witness all of that stuff, I bet you at least half the people would have forgiven her and her image and everything uh, would be in a lot better standing than it is now. And she would actually gain some respect back. I think you're, <clears throat> excuse me, I think you're absolutely right about that. Because if I'm not mistaken, the response was, nuh uh, essentially. Yeah. And I mean, I'm no expert, but I don't think that was the right path to take. Especially, especially after, you know, being given the honor of uh, being Impact World Champion, that's the first look you're you're giving people as the the top person in the company. There are, I mean, think of it this way: How would John Cena have handled the situation? Because quite frankly, and I, I, he has his haters. We we haven't really been on that bandwagon. I've always given the guy a ton of respect. 
even if I got tired of watching him after a while. It's you got to respect the work that he puts in. Mm-hmm. But he is the guy to set the bar, to set the example on how to handle public matters. I mean, look at everything he's been through. He's been hated by the fans, called out to his face uh, numerous times. He had to go through a very... Blackmailed by a couple of exes. Blackmailed by a couple of exes. He went through a very public breakup with another, you know... I don't want to say famous. Is, is, Is Nikki really famous? I mean, really... Probably on the same line as what? As the gen, uh, the Jenner girls, Kardashians. Excuse me. No, I wouldn't even put her that high. No offense to her, but I mean, people Every, know who, the, who the Kardashians are walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she would turn head. She's hot, but you know what I'm saying. Mm. John Cena still had to go through a very public breakup after a very public engagement. Mm -hmm. And the guy handles himself with nothing but class and professionalism almost at all times. So Tessa could have really taken a page out of this guy's book. And even without issuing an apology, you know... I'm not going to say she should because I don't. I wasn't there. I don't know if she did it or not. But apparently, there are a lot of people that say she did. It would have to me. I would have put a video statement. I would have said, "Hey, uh, get the production team. Let's get this video on YouTube, social media, everywhere on the site." I would say, I would say everything that I am uh, supposedly responsible for. Blah, 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 blah. Own up to it and individually uh, put the names of everybody that she had altercations with. Um, and say, look, I'm sorry. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for an opportunity to talk to you in person, whether it's through texts or a phone call or to actually meet in person. Because that's what I would have done. And honestly, I think that's what a lot of pro sports people would do. Now, Hogan did that, but uh, it didn't come off as genuine, you know? It didn't really come off as genuine. Oh, so it it might not. His his apology that he made after saying racially charged comments while banging his best friend's wife. On camera, might 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 have been disingenuous a little bit, hmm. because there was a whole lot of wrong with what happened there, right, brother? <laughs> it was not not good. But if I if I was Tessa, not that I am, but if if I were, I would have issued one of those apologies, you know, in quotations, where it's more like, look. I'm I'm sorry that if if I hurt anybody's feelings or uh did anything that offended anybody in the past uh, but I can't regret the things I did because it got to me to where I am. And yeah, we got a t- is... we got a couple of Twitter questions that okay. I didn't notice until now. Apparently this was sent 10 minutes ago by 808 sports fan. Who is your guy's favorite to win the Royal Rumble? And the next question they asked is, who is going to win? Who is your guy's picks to win the Women's Royal Rumble? Good questions. Okay, so basically our Rumble picks for both matches. Yeah. Uh, I I think the women's match only has like four people announced so far. Mm-hmm. So that's a little bit trickier. And the men's match, by the way, the Raw team, are, well, not team, but the Raw brand already has like 11 or 12 entrants. 
That is weird because I was expecting each of the three brands to have ten. I was thinking nine and leaving like three up in the air for whatever. Yeah. So yeah, Raw's already taken their number and then some. It's like NXT is going to have less than five for the men. So they can put Sergeant Slaughter back in there? Yeah. I changed my pick, by the way, if you remember a couple of weeks ago. Who it really? was. You want me to give you my update? Because you were you've been saying Roman for a year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Who's your So who's your uh I'm still picking Roman, but I'm gonna say this. If Keith Lee is in the men's Royal Rumble match, Keith Lee will be facing Brock Lesnar at at, at WrestleMania. <laughs> oh man, that is quite the bold prediction. Dude, would would you like to see that match i think that match is gold yeah yeah it would be a great match if keith lee, i'm saying this now i'm picking roman reigns but if keith lee is in the royal rumble match i'm going with keith lee um and for the women if Shayna baszler is in the women's royal i'm gonna go with Shayna baszler uh if she's not um originally I was going with Asuka, but I changed my mind to Sasha Banks. I think uh, Sasha Banks is going to win the Women's Royal and she's going to... Um, they're going to have like a little angle with her and Bailey, and I think they're going to make... Uh, I don't know, man. I think we're going to get Babyface Bailey back for WrestleMania. I think we're going to get Bailey versus Sasha. For the SmackDown Women's Championship, a little played out, but interesting choice. Yeah, I mean they have to. I mean they got nothing going on with that title. Yeah, I think we're going to see. Lacey Evans is getting there, but I think uh, she. I think, I think she needs the tag team championship, the women's tag championship, to put her up there in the next step. That's fair. That's fair. So I think have... she I think she's done a wonderful job since they turned her baby face. Let's see, you have Sasha and Keith Lee. Yeah. Who by the way, I pretty sure he will be in the rumble. Um mm -hmm. and he will face off against Brock Lesnar in the Rumble, I think. So you'll get that moment. I'm not sure. Maybe he'll be the one that that eliminates Brock. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that guy could set up a, a program, but I don't think it would mean he's winning. It seems like the winner of the Rumble is going to be taking on... I don't know. I don't know. It, it's really up in the air right now because... You know, Daniel Bryan's going up against The Fiend. And I'm leaning towards, you know, The Fiend retaining. Daniel Bryan still chasing. And chasing until Mania, hopefully. But if... Well, the reason DD why out, I said... The reason why I said uh, Roman is that I the only one that can legitimately beat the monster The Fiend is somebody that that beat cancer. That's 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 my main point of why I picked Roman because I think uh, their Vince is going to make him go over the Fiend for the WWE title at WrestleMania. But if Keith Lee is in this match, I think I think they're going to make the big match between him and Brock. Oh, new question came in. It's uh, Hydra four six seven. Got to scroll up a little bit. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. Let me answer the last question real quick. Like, I'll right, say yeah. Drew McIntyre and Shayna Baszler. It'll probably okay. change next week, though. Oh, Drew. Yeah. I Drew's a baby face him. now, technically, right? I don't think he has a, an, you know, an alignment. Tweener. I just think... I. 
at this moment in time, next week when we, when we do our actual predictions, I, it could all change. But at this point in time, I can see Drew McIntyre for the next two months, whoever the champion is, being... All right, we've got a date at WrestleMania. <laughs> My goodness, a long paragraph, but the actual question is at the very bottom of it. Okay, do you guys think WrestleMania should be a two-day event like they did with Wrestle Kingdom? Yes! Get rid of the Hall of Fame, or at least move it to Wednesday... NXT TakeOver on Friday, Night 1, WrestleMania Saturday, Night 2, Sunday. That way, the two top championships can actually main event the card on both nights. Been saying that for two years almost. That is a good Josh. point. That is a very good point. Night 1, headlined by the WWE Championship. Night two by the Universal Championship or vice versa, or they alternate. Every or one of the women's championship if the storyline, uh, like this past WrestleMania, Calls does its stuff. It. I, I still think I'm still wanting that one on one Ronda Rousey versus uh, Becky Lynch match. I yeah, just don't still think, wait uh, for that. Yeah. Even though it's by the way, if happens. Ronda Rousey is in the Royal Rumble, I'm going to go with Ronda. If Ronda and Shayna are both in the Royal Rumble, I'm going to go with Ronda. Cha-ching. I, 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 I could totally see Ronda coming back and winning the Rumble. After yeah. all, like I said, only four people have been announced so far for the women's Rumble match. It's, it, it wouldn't be... It mm. would... I mean, it would be a moment that where, where I am sh- shocked, uh, but mm. it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Getting back to the last thing I wanted to talk about on Impact. Impact Impact Wrestling's Twitch channel got banned, Josh. Yeah, I saw that. And, uh, yep, I see why. I mean, I mean, when you got two, two women hunched over like that, not only did you see lip, but you saw some the sides of a butthole. A bleached, waxed butthole. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what Impact was thinking. Especially, there goes a big chunk of revenue right there for uh, their monthly subscribers. That they, that they You know, a nice chunk of change per month that they just lost. I, I I did see a meme that was like, do you remember where you were when Rob Van Dam and Val Venus switched gimmicks? Right. Because Val Venus, you know, sells legal pot and RVD is shooting porn, apparently. <laughs> it's I, so I weird, dude. Don't know. I'm, I understand that Rob Van Dam's apparently in, um, you know, a polyamorous relationship. Um, you know, it, it's for those that don't know, it's where you it's an open relationship, basically, except and as a friend of mine once put it, uh, the difference between being poly and cheating is you have full open communications with your, you know, I guess, primary partner while you're allowed to do what you want, essentially um, in in. That's from what I understand what Rob Van Dam is doing, which is that for real or is that a gimmick? No, that's legit. That's his life. So, so the two girls, yeah, they're, they're his okay. girlfriends, and his girlfriend's girlfriend. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, I, ne- I never RVD really cared is, to be honest. Ever since oh. you know he he and his wife uh, split, he's just been. I don't know. It's like. He's reinvigorated, and I don't know the story behind their their split. The last time I heard RVD's podcast is when his wife was still fighting cancer, and then what she, you know, went into remission. I guess things went south, and hmm. things happened. I don't know. I, I I don't like to talk about 
personal things like that. Of, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, no. Uh, uh, the guys, because it just feels icky. But when it's put out on Front Street like that in a, you know, a promo that winds up getting your company banned from one of one of its platforms, it's it's hard to not bring up. Right. And I hate the segment even more for that because I mean, if I was fifteen, I would be like, oh yeah, this is the best ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm practically watching Skinamax right here on Twitch. And that I thought we moved beyond that as uh, wrestling fans. Hmm. And apparently some of us uh, still live in the 90s. And as much as I wish that were true, it's it's not the case anymore. We don't do that. We can be edgy. We can be gritty. We can We can be sexy. But we don't need to be straight up pornographic. Not not in this day and age. Unless that's your company's gimmick, but you, there are channels for that. Yeah. All right. So he talked about Marty Skrull. Talked in length about uh, impact, some of the stuff going on in Impact. Uh, we talked. Uh, we answered some questions for the Royal Rumble. Uh, is there anything else to get in? Um, as far as wrestling goes, no, no, I think I am. Tapped. Oh, Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Kingdom. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about that last week since I wasn't on. Uh, what did you think of Wrestle Kingdom? Uh, probably going to be the, you know, event of the year, at least until <laughs> the G1 rolls around. Oh yeah. New Japan killing it as always. We were wrong about what the main event was going to be. And we were wrong, mm-hmm, about but I was time. so happy. Like, dude, I was so happy. Yeah, I I watched it live. Uh, um, yeah, surprise, I watched it live, and yeah. I thought to myself, I don't know what Ben is doing right now, but in the next five minutes, should have shot probably... me a message on Discord. I was, <laughs> I was posting. Uh, spoilers in the spoilers channel on Discord at at the end of each event. <laughs> I know I could have, but you're probably half asleep. I, mostly, mostly asleep. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, they split their roster in half for the uh, I think the new beginning tour for US Day and Japan. Uh, all of most of the big guns are staying in Japan for the Japanese tour for no, New Beginning, uh, which starts in a week and a half from now. Uh, yeah. and the biggest guys they have on the roster in the in the for the United States tour is uh, Koro Ibushi and Hiroshi Tanahashi. I mean, those are good names to see, but. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not driving. A lot of people want to see Naito, especially that he's champion. Uh, oh, two belts, Naito. John Moxley versus Minoru Suzuki's in the Japanese tour. Yeah, because he can't you know? do it in the U.S. And Suzuki's super over here in America, so um, I don't know. Missed opportunity there again. I don't know. Uh, that's the only bad, or should I say, negative thing for New Japan going on right now. But man. <sighs> oh, I do have one more thing. The the John Moxley joining the inner circle segment. Oh, that was pure gold. I seen it a mile away though. Yeah, I thought <laughs> Honestly, you know, you know what would have made happen. it What would have been better is if he sold it for a week instead of 5 minutes. Yeah, I think the 5 minutes was too much. It's better than WWE. Like WWE never give it g- gives any anything like that time. Like re- remember the festival of friendship. It just <laughs> at least they, uh, it's like oh my god he really is turning. They actually got the crowd to say you sold out you sold out and then he he was like nope I ain't joining. I thought that was yeah. fantastic, but it would have been super genius if they waited until next week. 
next week, all I, all I wanted to see from him next week was Moxley going, you know, you told me I had to join you to get this car, and you didn't say how long I had to, to be with you. So, you know, hits him with his finisher, grabs the keys, and is like, thanks for the car. Mm-hmm. That, I just would have liked to, to hear that line. I joined you, but you didn't say for how long. Yeah. You know, another thing interesting is that uh, this coming Wednesday is supposed to be part two or part two of Bash at the Beach. And it's actually going to be a taped. It's going to be a taped episode of uh, Dynamite on top of the Jericho Cruise. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things about what's been going on in AEW. The fact that you can draw a clear line. Jericho's rocking razors. <laughs> and it's it's going to these interesting places. Mm-hmm. Like a cruise line. <laughs> and and from... I want them to go Miami. Mall of America like they did for the very first episode of Nitro. Stuff like that. I think that would be really cool just, just to see where they pop up next. And sure, you're you're losing out on certain amount of ticket sales, but it would make the the demand be so high if if you limit the availability of tickets and put them in interesting places. Another thing too, since uh, the beginning of the new year. I fully expected NXT to continue getting wins over uh, AEW in the ratings. Because, you know me, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. But considering that uh, after Full Gear, that there was a three-month wait until Revolution. And WWE is going to have four pay-per-views. Well, three major pay-per-views. Not counting the one we had a couple of days ago at uh, TakeOver Blackpool. Uh, which I haven't watched yet. I don't think I'm going to watch it. But I watched that. But um, how'd you like it? Nine out of ten. Uh, I'd say eight out of ten. Okay. But uh, yeah, I never. I thought uh, NXT would pick up at least four straight victories, a month's worth of beating them in the TV ratings. But I was, it didn't go that way. No, in fact, um, AEW's numbers have been higher than ever. They are so close to passing a million. They actually, uh, the uh, Brian Alvarez said they actually average one point one. Like they actually have over a million. It's just that there's some fall off somewhere. Um, but they said that. Uh, that NXT's numbers is actually much lower because they estimate over 220k people jump over from Dynamite to watch the the end of NXT. So instead of the 700 range, it's actually like in the 500 550 range, and it only ends up being in the 700 750 area because that's all. Uh, people who jump ship since uh, there's over overhang of, of time between both shows which is very interesting hmm. but like I said the last two episodes I, I don't care about the dusty tournament <laughs> and it made me not care about the dusty tournament because one they always end up breaking breaking half the teams up not long after the dusty tournament is over two they end up putting two singles people into the dusty tournament and make them win the whole thing and three if they had followed that uh that recipe it would have been a super positive it would have been a positive this time with the time splitters but no they reunited the time splitters only for them to lose and that made yeah. me angry, legitimately. Like I was like, I I, I don't want to watch NXT anymore. And I just because this past week, what I've been doing, Josh, is 
I've been alternating every week which one, which show I would watch live, which show I would watch later on in the same day, right? And this week, and and last week it was NXT. I was like so mad. I was like, nope, I'm gonna watch AEW. And then I ended up watching the immediate replay of AEW right after that because I had missed the first hour. So, yeah. So, uh, NXT got three wins. And AEW, I don't know, what is this, week 14, 15? I have no idea. Yeah. For me personally, I liked only three NXT episodes. I know there's two ties. So the majority of the wins uh, with the better show for me is AEW. And with that, uh, that's that's all I got to say. Anything else, Josh? Uh, nothing about wrestling, but I do want to um, put something out there. For everybody that... Well, let me start off this way. I want to give a big special thanks to my friend Kente Ferguson out there on the West Coast who this weekend did the... Uh, did a 24-hour podcasting marathon. Jeez. With his uh, indie radio uh, channel. And I was a guest on the fourth hour. Uh, that would be 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern. And we talked about anticipated movies of 2020. And from the Can you give me your top three? Give me your top three. three most anticipated movies of 2020. Yeah. Um, Can you give me from 2020 to 2021? Uh, uh, January 2021. I'll give you mine right after. Okay. Um, I actually have the list. Hold on. Okay. Can I go list. first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, what do you call that? Shang-Chi. Marvel Shang-Chi. Number three. Number two, okay. Godzilla vs. Kong. Mm-hmm. Number one, and January 15th, 2021, Mortal Kombat, the reboot. None of those are on my list. Okay. I, I purposely left out comic book movies and things like that because it's not that I don't anticipate them, but... You're more I, of a serious movie watcher. You're more of like an Oscar type of critic. I'm more of a pop culture movie critic. Hey, I love comic book movies. You know that. Right, right, right. But I just think at this point, for me... I'm not gonna, I'm not the type that sits through Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Or, it's a great movie, you know. man. I know, I know, but I'm just saying... I'm just saying uh, why you and I would do really good for like that, you know, that top 10 podcast thing that we're going <laughs> about is that we come at it from, different we ratings. love the same things. We're just, we just like different things and the same things. Yeah. But I, 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 I don't like, I don't like serious movies. Fair, fair enough. I won't recommend marriage story then. <laughs> Like, uh, uh, Marriage Store, uh, yeah. Like, that type of movies, I have a certain director or a certain taste. Like, like Judd, like, uh, Judd Apatow, romantic rom-coms that are serious. I like those. That's fair. That's fair. But my list. My top three. Go ahead. Okay. Like I said, I didn't add the comic book movies because at this point, for me, it's a given. Okay, (laughs) they're they're going to be there. I'm going to see them. But for my list of most anticipated movies, I have, I guess, in no particular order. Yeah, uh, Tenet. Oh my god. Yeah, I just saw that trailer two days ago. It's crazy how good that looks, and I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it reminds me of a Metal Gear Solid from Hideo Kojima. Like, there's like so much going on. I don't know, but I like it. Uh, next up is the gentleman. Don't know that. It's Guy Ritchie kind of returning to form with 
mm. the lock, stock, and two smoking barrels snatch type movie. At oh. least that's what it looks like. And finally, uh, a movie that will never be on your list, In the Heights. Never heard of it. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> it it was a Broadway production uh, written and starring Lin-Manuel Miranda that wasn't Hamilton. I like him. He's great. Yeah, and now very in good. The Heights is. I like him. Him. I'm very high feature. on him and Taika Watiti. Yeah, very high on both of those guys. Jojo Rabbit was freaking amazing. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna watch it. You know what? I had fun watching this past weekend. Oh my god, we're going off tangent, but this is the last thing I'm gonna say that's not in wrestling. Uh, Sex Education season two was amazing. You know what? We're going to talk off the air about uh, some of this. But continuing my thing, um, from hours five to seven, I relaunched SCOP, the Semicore official podcast. It seemed like a good time to do it uh, during the special event. So <clears throat> today's episode was marked as episode zero. It's not available to download. You kind of had to be there. But next week... Episode number one of the new SCAP 2020 is a thing. So the entertainment podcast is back <clears throat> and um, ready to talk about movies and TV. Ooh. So the semi nice. podcast, SCAP 2020, is coming back. And I wanted, to, I wanted to throw that out there, as well as give thanks to Kente for letting me be a part of his... Is the Netflix being absorbed into that? No, no, it's still going to okay. be its own thing. Okay. I was thinking about, though, changing the Netflix to something weekly. So instead of, here's everything coming out in the month, it would be, here's everything coming out this week. So it would give kind of more time to, you know, really go into what's coming out. And maybe even <clears> talk <throat> about what's leaving the service. That way, you know what you have to get in before the end of the month. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we tagged in an hour exactly. My name is Ben. That's Josh. And we will see you guys next week where we'll be talking more AEW, more Road to NXT TakeOver, and Royal Rumble. Josh, uh, is the Royal Rumble going to be in a big arena this year? It's going to be in a stadium, I believe. Okay. Just checking. With that said, we're going to play the outro music. Too sweet, everybody. Too sweet.